I'm here in the frozen canals of France, clearing up the panels of my Solar Explorer Yacht prototype. I've been stationed in this little town called Fumé, and before this day I haven't even bothered to clear up the solar panels because my batteries have been full. Usually when sitting in harbor with the solar boat you have an excess of energy and that has been accurate even here in winter, but that's only true because I've not used any heating yet. It's been very cold inside for the couple past days, but I'm Finnish. I was born not out of a womb, but climbed out of a frozen lake. Using warm clothing and sheepskins, I've stayed okay. It's been around 2 to 5 degrees Celsius inside, so we gotta bring that up to a comfortable level. So the next step I'm taking is integrating a 230 volt system that is connected directly to the huge batteries on board of the Helios 11 that will allow me to use any devices without worrying about finding some 48 volt heating systems. It makes things simpler but not 100% efficient. That is okay. Being on a solar boat with roughly 6000 watts of panels means that we have an overabundance of electricity whenever we're not sailing. And that means that our insulation and heating systems don't have to be fully optimal. So what I'm doing here after installing the 230 volt transformer is to lightly insulate the main cabin of the Helios 11. I do the insulation mainly out of wool, keeping the environment healthy and natural, warm to the feeling, but I didn't have enough wool right now, so I had to get a couple of these polyester blankets and they will do for now. This is mainly a test just to see how efficient the heating will become. Can I run it entirely on the solar charge, even in winter? Let's start with the experiment. Currently we got 7.8 degrees Celsius on the inside of the cabin, no heating on. It's roughly the same temperature on the outside. And now we're gonna finish up the setup of this wool fortress that I was dreaming of when I was a kid. It's surprisingly cozy and what I love about being on a prototype is that I can do whatever I want to. I'm gonna screw this right into the plywood and think about it later. Now we got roughly 99% coverage over everything in this cabin. Even the windows are fully covered and that's a great benefit because that's the weakest point in any insulation system. Later on we're gonna install double windows, of course. But now let's close the door and put the heating on. This is a serious scientific test the Pillow Fortress versus the Winter of France. As the heater is running, I'm gonna show everything we got here. Wool coverage over almost the entire cabin. Plywood wall with some thin insulative foam on the other side. We got the sofa, naturally very good insulation. On the side of the sofa we got the wool. This would naturally already be a double layer but this wool makes it even better. On the floor, a wool mat. Additional sheepskin for coziness. On the roof, we got a polyester blanket with a nice pattern. During this test, the transformer will also be inside of the pillow fortress, which means that any transformation losses are converted directly into heat. The electric stove is now at 900 watts, it's getting warmer and I want to highlight it's an extreme fire hazard. This is not the permanent setup, I just want to see how much energy do we need to raise the cabin temperature by 10 degrees. It's getting real cozy here, we got 16 degrees Celsius 
and rising. It's already comfortable enough for me if I have a wool sweater on, roughly 12 degrees is acceptable and 15 degrees is excellent. Let's see how high we can take it on 900 watts and still unoptimized insulation. We got a bit of gaps here and there and we can make it better. Now it's been roughly 30 minutes, I feel that the temperature is starting to settle and I've noticed that the sound environment here is very cozy, it feels soft and all the noises from the outside world are dampened and this feels like a safe space. Let's take a look at the thermometer, we're 20 degrees, 20.1 degrees Celsius and this is measuring from chest level here in the cabin. The thermometer was stuck here. I'm very happy with these results. In the middle of winter we get 7 degrees Celsius on the outside and inside it's 20 degrees, over 13 degrees difference just on 900 watts of heating. So this confirms that I can run the solar systems and get enough energy and keep this relatively large cabin for a 35 foot boat completely warm with low energy. Now that I know roughly the required energy to keep this space heated 13 degrees above the surrounding, I can go ahead and get my infrared heating. I think I will get away with as little as 300 to 500 watts to keep the space comfortable. Keep in mind that infrared heating is far more efficient than just heating up the entire room. When you have an infrared heater on top of you, that's gonna be far more efficient. Next, I'm gonna optimize some of the surfaces, for example, putting insulative foam underneath the mats of the floor. Then I know for sure I can expand the insulated cabin space all the way back, getting a total of roughly seven square meters of warm cabin, even in winter. Now then, how much energy do I really generate even in the low light conditions of winter? Realistically, on the Helios 11, we're generating anything between 2 and 20 kilowatts per day. If we get an average of only 3 kilowatts, that is already enough to keep things warm for the hours that matter. I'm not inside of the boat the entire day, I have errands to run, and adventures to complete. So this confirms my hypothesis that there is an overflow of energy on a solar boat such as the Helios 11. As long as we're not going too heavy on the heating and not wanting to travel every single day forward and whenever we hit a marina with a power plug or a completely sunny day, all of our energy concerns will vanish immediately. You can also have a diesel generator but I prefer the silent operations on the Helios 11. I want to share a bit about the True North philosophy of solar yachting. So whenever you're in a very low light cold environment, you might have to become a bit of a warrior. It's the adventure. If you insist upon going to Finland or Greenland in autumn or in spring, where you don't have that much energy and you need more heating, for the cabin, you might want to go into a light adventure mode, having a cabin temperature of 15 degrees, putting on a wool sweater, enjoying the adventure, and whenever you get to warmer climates or happen to have sunnier days, then you can crank up the heating and also crank up the speed you're traveling at. So for me it's a balance of being the warrior out on your mission and then the nobleman enjoying life and being in a higher energetic state when you have full comfort on board. And I'm gonna go further toward that nobleman feeling whenever I get further south. That's the real place you want to be on a solar boat, but now that we've tested these and we've seen the real world solar inputs, even in winter, we know that uh, a larger solar yacht that is even more efficient than the crude Helios 11 winter expedition 
becomes possible. That is huge, that is so exciting. I've run several models of a extended Helios 22 that would be slightly wider but have the same waterline width and of course 22 meters of sleek waterline length, 60,000 kilowatts of solar panels and huge battery banks to keep the entire boat stable. This might be a competitor to the proposed Halo 13 Swath Twin Hull. I'm very excited to develop all of these models and because I have such a overflow of ideas, I'm gonna make 3D models, put a motor on them, get the remote control and test them in real conditions, throw them in difficult conditions and really see what is too wobbly in the ocean. Can we come up with some alien designs that work against all intuition and against all standard shipbuilding practices? We're gonna try out the Halo 13 SWAT design, the Helios 22 super narrow long monohull that's gonna pierce through the waves and we will also try out the counterintuitive performance barge design. It's crazy, but uh, it might actually outperform a catamaran. What does all of this mean for the future? That is the question that makes me so excited to gather all of this raw data and turn it into models for future versions and upgrades even of the Helios 11. We're talking about long-range cruise speeds of 8 to 12 knots. We're talking about heating and infrared saunas while crossing the Atlantic. This may sound like a sales pitch because this video is sponsored by me. I've been putting all of my money into this project. I want to take rapid steps forward, no friction. This YouTube channel is actually funding the research. And if you're eager to accelerate my journey, and also your journey toward acquiring a solar yacht, consider purchasing this manual I've wrote about the principles of solar yacht development. It will teach you what is critical, what are the core ideas behind a highly efficient solar yacht that breaks all the boat building norms. You can also support this non-profit project through YouTube memberships. Thank you very much for everybody already supporting the journey. Now I want to give you a full boat tour of the Helios 11. We start from the sun deck, roughly four square meters of sun deck here at the rear. And then we go into the main room, the saloon, that is 2.4 times 3 meters in dimensions. Currently, we have this pillow fort set up here. All standing height, roughly 2 meters, very comfortable for me. On the other side of the pillow fort, we got the kitchen. A bit messy. The toilet is situated here, and then we have the large bedroom. We got a full queen-sized bed, plenty of storage, and still, we got complete standing height throughout the entire room. Moving forward to the captain's cabin. This is where the magic happens but it doesn't feel magical yet. We got this terrible plywood steering wheel that is 100% functional, but it doesn't feel good. I want to make this cabin feel good. A lot of interior finishing needs to be done here. Now let's move to the outside of the Helios 11. Front deck, 450 watts of flexible panels. On the roof here, we get a total of 10 normal panels. These flexible panels have proven to be very efficient. We got 600 watts on both sides and all of these will be adjustable once I make the next upgrades for the Helios 11. We can lift the side panels up like that and the entire roof array will rise up roughly 50 centimeters which gives us at least double the performance. So we got a total of roughly 6 kilowatts on the Helios 11 and if I wanted to go really heavy on the solar this could be easily upgraded to roughly 8 kilowatts on a vessel of similar proportions to the Helios 11. 
Now it is time for me to get those infrared heaters and start creating my 3D models that I'm gonna toss into the water and see what happens. I'm glad you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned to the mission by subscribing. And as always, don't forget to get out there.